Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Live Storytime. I'm, of course, um, Miss Mary, and happy Friday. I um, have some great stories to share with you today, and I'm just going to wait for people to arrive. Okay, and of course, as always, if you um, do come into the Live Storytime, be sure to say hello in the chat and I will do my best to give you a shout out. So we'll just wait a little bit for some people to arrive. Okay. So the number is going up a bit. Again, say hello in the chat. Um, just write a little note to me to say hello and I will be sure to give you a shout out in the in um in my story time i hope everyone is having a good week just wait a little bit for more people to arrive my hair is <laughs> doing something crazy today um wait for more some more people to arrive hello carrie welcome to live story time and as always, just um, say hello in the chat and I'll be sure to give you a shout out. Today's story time is um, based on our new, we're doing something new and fun this summer. Um, they're called Themed Weekly Activity Guides. And every week is a different theme that the children's department is preparing. and. This week's theme is fairy tale adventures. So all of my stories today are um, based on either fairy tales or, you know, just kind of like fun. Um, we have a story about a not so imaginary friend today and I think that is a great story. Plus we have um, two stories that um, I have an Indian version of Rapunzel and a really, really beautiful version of Cinderella that is actually a combined um, retelling of it from all different parts of the world. So just incredible stories for you today. Okay, hi Michelle, how are you? Happy Friday. Um, hi Tara, and if Vincent's with you, hi Vincent. So, um, you know what, let's get started. I've also, um, I'm going to link it again in the comments, but I also linked in the blurb for today that uh, the link to where you can find that amazing activity guide filled with all sorts of fun things that you can do um, with your family this summer. So, oh, and I wanted to show off my shirt today. This one is, I like you just the way you are. And of course, that's a famous quote from Mr. Rogers. And um, here we go, let's get started. This is a once upon a world. This is, again, the Indian version of Cinderella. I'm sorry, Rapunzel. Oh my gosh, we are reading another, another Cinderella. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a girl named Rapunzel. Rapunzel had long, beautiful hair and a lovely voice. She lived by herself in a tall tower on a hilltop. See that long, beautiful hair? Oh, my hair has never been that long. When Rapunzel was a baby, a witch had taken her far away from home, through the forest and to this tower. Rapunzel was never allowed to leave. When the witch needed to visit, she would call out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel would throw down her long braid and the witch would climb up to the tower window. One day, a prince was riding through the woods when he heard a melody coming from the tower window. He thought, there must be a girl up there as lovely as that song. Suddenly, the witch appeared. The prince hid in the bushes. He watched her call for Rapunzel and then climb up her hair. 
The prince waited for the witch to leave, and then he too called, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel let down her hair, but when she saw the prince in the window, she gasped. Who are you? she asked. The prince bowed and introduced himself. Then he and Rapunzel began to talk. They talked for hours. Rapunzel told the prince about life in the tower, and the prince listened. He was falling in love. The prince began to visit Rapunzel every day. She loved when he told her stories about the outside world. He talked about his horses and the beautiful streams he liked to walk along, and the little village nearby. Rapunzel wished she could see what was beyond her tower. It must get lonely up there, right? Come with me to my kingdom, said the prince one day. Oh, the witch will never let me leave, Rapunzel sighed. The prince took her by her hand and promised to help her escape. Later that day, the witch saw the prince climbing down Rapunzel's hair. We will leave tomorrow, he called up to his love. The witch was furious. As punishment, she cut Rapunzel's long, beautiful hair. Then, with a wave of her wand, she cast Rapunzel from the tower deep into the forest. The next day, the prince returned. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair, he called. Rapunzel's beautiful hair came tumbling down, but when the prince climbed up to the window, the witch was waiting for him. The witch put a curse on the prince that made him unable to see. Blindly, the prince escaped from the tower. He called Rapunzel's name, but she was too far away to hear him. He wandered the forest, searching for his lost love. Many days passed. The prince had almost given up hope. Then, one day, he heard another lovely melody. It was Rapunzel. He was sure of it. Rapunzel, he called out. Reunited, Rapunzel and the prince embraced. When Rapunzel learned that the witch's curse had made the prince blind, she wept and wept. But as Rapunzel's tears fell on the prince's face, something magical happened. Her tears broke the witch's curse, and the prince could see again. Rapunzel and the prince returned to his kingdom. There, far from the witch's tower, they lived happily ever after. And that is the story of Rapunzel. Okay, let's see. Oh, hi Jenny, hi Luna. Welcome to story time. And of course, as always, just a reminder that the replay video for this is always posted as soon as I end the um, the video today, the live feed. So you can catch up on any stories that you may have missed or any information that you may have missed. So again, today I'm reading stories that fit our fairy tale adventure themed weekly activity guide. I linked it above, but I'm going to do a quick comment to share that link again. And let's get ready with our, our next story. This is called The Adventures of Beagle, an unimaginary friend. Okay, so he's not imaginary. Here we go. He was born on an island far away where imaginary friends were created. Here, they lived and played, each eagerly awaiting to be imagined by a real child.
every night he stood under the stars, hoping for his turn to be picked by a child and given a special name. He waited for many nights. Here he is, right? There's Beagle. He's waiting for a friend. But his turn never came. Aww. His mind filled with thoughts of all the amazing things that were keeping his friend from imagining him. So rather than waiting, he did the unimaginable. I wonder what he did. He sailed through unknown waters and faced many scary things. But thinking about his friend gave him the courage to journey on. Until he reached the real world. Okay, there's the real world, right? The real world was a strange place. No kids were eating cake. No one stopped to hear the music. And everyone needed nap time. Well, that's relatable. <laughs> then he finally saw something familiar. So he followed. He had a good feeling about this place, but he looked everywhere and he could not find his friend. He climbed to the top of a tree and looked out, wishing and hoping his friend would come. There he is, but no friend yet. But no one came. He's up there all alone, see? He thought about how far he'd come and how long he'd waited and felt very sad. Then he heard a noise below. Hello? <gasps> Could this be a new friend for Beagle? Her face was friendly and familiar and there was something about her that felt just right. First, they weren't sure what to do. Neither of them had made a friend before, but after a little while, they realized that they were perfect together. Beagle and Alice had many new adventures. They shared their snacks. They told funny jokes. The world began to feel a little less strange. And together, they did the unimaginable. Ah, oh, sure they had so many adventures together, right? As friends. Oh, I'm so glad he found his friend in the end. So that is the story of the adventures of Beagle. Okay, so again, um, I don't see any, oh, I do see one new comment. We love your t-shirt message. Oh, thank you, Jenny. A classic Mr. Rogers saying, um, he had a song called, I like you just the way you are. And he always said that on his show. And of course the Mr. Rogers trolley. So also, you know what, I haven't brought him down in a couple of weeks, so I just wanted to say, here's Kermit to say hello to everybody. And he just loves staying up on the top of the couch and watching our story time too, making sure I'm doing a good job. So I'll put him back up there so he can listen. Okay, so um, again, I wanted to welcome everybody to this week's story time. We are doing stories that match our fairy tale adventure theme for the week. And if you're unfamiliar with our themed guides for the summer, we have a different theme every week. 
so this the this week is fairy tale adventures and i've linked to it both in the blurb at the top of this video and also in the comments so that you can check out this week's guide for all sorts of fun things that you can do that are related to fairy tales and um, maybe some wizard stories things like that um, castles and um, just a lot of fun on that guide virtual castle tours and maybe some recipes that you can make so again today's stories are themed for that and um, before I read my last story which is such a beautiful retelling of Cinderella I, um, I wanted to make a mention of something um, a little more serious and um, but worth a mention, of course, um, as you know, we've been dealing with the coronavirus and the um, quarantine and just starting to get back into things, right? Here in New York and on Long Island, things are starting to open up again and the library is starting to offer more services, including curbside pickup and, you know, and we're happy to offer those services for you, absolutely. Um, but this has been a very hard time for many people um, in our community. It's been a hard time for many people in the world. Um, and I just wanted to make a mention of that for all of those who are suffering or who are struggling or who have lost someone perhaps. Um, we have, um, you know, I know a few people who have lost loved ones, and I just wanted to make sure that we honored that and remembered them today in just a very, very brief moment of silence, just to remember all who have been lost, unfortunately, to this virus. So just a quick little bit, and... I'll uh, let you know when it's over and just, you know, think a little bit about those who are struggling right now. So, And I, um, my heart goes out to anybody who is struggling in any way, um, but of course, especially those who have lost a loved one over the past few months. It is something I can't even imagine. So I wanted to honor that today. Um, but let's end on a happy note with a beautiful, Again, retelling of Cinderella. This is called Glass Slipper Gold Sandal, a Worldwide Cinderella. And this is by Paul Fleischman. And this is such an amazing book. Um, it intertwines and interweaves so many different versions of Cinderella into one story. Uh, I can't wait to share it with you. And this, in the beginning, is a map of all of the different countries in the world that have versions of Cinderella. And as we hit each page where we, we change to a different country, I'll let you know that we've changed. Okay, so this is Glass Slipper Gold Sandal. Once upon a time, there lived a wealthy merchant whose wife had died they had one daughter, gentle-eyed and good-hearted. Okay, so now we're in Mexico. Okay. Down the road lived a widow with two daughters. The woman gave the girl treats when she passed, pan dulce to eat, sugar cane to chew. The girl knew that her father was lonely. You should marry the widow, she told him. 
She's nice to me. The father had his doubts, but the girl kept asking, and how long can a father say no to his daughter? And so he and the widow were married. Okay, on, on this page, we're in Korea. But no sooner had the stepmother moved in than she began to order the girl about. All day long, she set her to weeding the rice fields and cooking and carrying. The woman gave the girl's room to her own lazy daughters. At night, the girl had nowhere else to sleep but curled for warmth among the ashes on the hearth. Okay, and now we're in Iraq. Her stepmother allowed her only a few scraps of food. Her stomach howled. Then the girl recalled how she had begged her father to marry. I picked up the scorpion with my own hand, she told herself. She vowed not to complain to her father and upset him. Okay, oh, on this page we're in three different countries. We start in Russia. But when the girl was out tending the cattle, the beasts heard her crying for hunger. Don't weep, said one of the cows, and the animal poured honey for her from its horn. And now we're in Iran, and a fairy gave her figs and apricots, and India, and Godfather Snake gave her rice. And now we're in Ireland. Once she was eating well and proper, the girl bloomed into a right rare beauty. The stepmother couldn't fathom it, and meanwhile her own sour-faced daughters would curdle the milk if they looked at it twice. Ooh, in Zimbabwe. One day it was announced far and wide that the great king was in search of a queen. All the unmarried women dressed in their finest robes and set off for the palace. Okay. On this page, we start off in Germany. To make sure the girl couldn't go, the stepmother threw an apron full of lentils into the ashes and ordered her to pick them all out. Now we're in Appalachia. And scour all the kitchen pots too, she hollered. Back to Germany. As soon as the stepmother left with her daughters, the girl burst into tears. Outside, the sparrows heard her. In they flew and pecked the lentils from the ashes. Again in Appalachia. Then a witch woman came in and spoke a spell, and up jumped the pots and scoured themselves. Okay, now we're in Laos. The girl was free to go, but she had nothing to wear except rags. Then she looked in her mother's sewing basket we're back in Russia. Then she reached into the hole in the birch tree. Indonesia. Then a crocodile swam up to the surface and in its mouth was, was a sarong made of gold. Okay, in China. A cloak sewn of kingfisher feathers. Japan. A kimono red as sunset. France. And on the girl's feet appeared a pair of glass slippers. Now that's the one I most am most familiar with. But in India, they were diamond anklets. And in Iraq, they were sandals of gold. Walk to the ball, said the girl's auntie. Never. She picked a big round breadfruit from a tree and tapped it three times with her wand quick as the blink of a firefly, that breadfruit changed itself into a coach. That was from the West Indies. When she made her entrance, so great was her beauty that the musicians stopped playing. No one, not even her stepmother, knew who the beautiful stranger was. Okay, this page is from Poland. we're back to Indonesia. 
all night the girl danced with the headman's son until the first rooster crowed. Then she remembered she had to leave at once. Hey, we're back to Ireland. She leaped onto her mare's golden saddle. Who are you? called the prince. The girl had no time for words and charged down the lane. The prince sprinted beside her, got a hand on her shoe, and the dainty thing pulled off in his fingers as she galloped away. Okay, we're back in China on this page. The king declared he would marry the golden shoes owner. He ordered the women of the court to try it on, but none could squeeze inside it. And so he went searching for its owner up and down mountains. Here we are in Iran and across the deserts and Laos until he came to the stepmother's house. When she saw him approach, she grabbed her stepdaughter, wrapped her in a mat, and hid her. We're in France. I'm certain the shoe will fit one of my fine favored girls, said the woman. Grunting and sweating, her older daughter tried to wrestle the shoe on, but couldn't. Neither could the younger. Okay, we're back. We're back in a rock. Just then, a rooster began to crow. They put the ugly one on show and hid the beauty down below. Okay, on this page, we're in Korea. The girl was brought forward. Don't waste your time with that one, said the stepmother. But the magistrate looked into the girl's eyes, took the straw sandal in his hand, and slipped it onto her foot with ease. Zimbabwe. She and the great king were married at the palace, where the guests feasted on mangoes and melons, and in India they feasted on season, rice seasoned with almonds, and in Ireland beef stew and lamb stew. Mexico, anise cookies and custards. Iraq, such a wedding it was, and such an adoring couple. Korea, and such a wonderful, wondrous turn of events that people today are still telling the story. That's right. Cinderella is one of the most well-known fairy tales. And um, that is just such an incredible book. Gold, uh, glass slipper, gold sandal. Just an incredible interweaving of all of the different versions of Cinderella from all countries around the world. Just so beautifully done. The illustrations are gorgeous too. So I just wanted to thank everybody for coming to Storytime this week. Oh, I see, um, oh yes, love Kermit. Same, love Kermit, Tara. Uh, hi, Lauren. And um, again, if you missed any of the stories today, please feel free to watch the replay video after the story time is over. And um, it will be popping up right onto the Patchogue Mifford Library Facebook page as soon as I end the video. And I just wanted to wish everyone a great weekend and to be well, to stay safe, to stay healthy. And I will see you next week for more stories and the stories next week will be based on next week's theme so they'll all be stories about art and artists so i hope to see you then until then i'll see you next time bye everyone <laughs>